welcome to the uh, the equestrian center over here, the Amundsen Equestrian Center. This has been around for 30 years uh, at the uh, graces of Bob Amundsen. He donated the land, he donated the property, and we've been in operation for 30 years as a full-time uh, equestrian police unit. Uh, currently, we have uh, one lieutenant, which is myself. We have uh, three sergeants, and we have 24 officers working this facility. A lot of one of the main questions is what we do here in the city of LA on horseback and um, many other units they are used mainly for parades here we're basically 90 percent of the time we're in a crime suppression element that means two officers two horses working together walking in a, whatever area that we're assigned in and suppressing crime we see we see crime and we can see about a block and a half away on horseback and see things that other people can't see. So that's one of the great uh, opportunities that we have uh, riding horseback. So this is the administrative office. This is where myself and the sergeants uh, basically run the unit. Um, we have certain historical pieces like a saddle that was used over 20 years ago and some of the uh, elements uh, that we use when we're out there. We, uh, As you know, we're working off of a saddle so our space to carry equipment is limited, but um, we'll get a little bit more information of what the Vulcan is used for, but um, this is a, a circus series uh, saddle that was used about 20 years ago. As we go into our next office, this is where the majority of our roll calls are held, and uh, there's uh, Sergeant Jetter right now, he's one of uh, our senior sergeants here of, uh, of the unit. Uh, this is where we hold our, our roll calls, we give our assignments, we, we talk about what our mission is going to be, and again, we work all over the city. Um, the majority of the time we're going to be in downtown, we're going to be in Venice Beach and Hollywood, but we really work all over the city where there are spikes in crimes and high density uh, of population where we can be most, most effective. So, um, Once we're done with our roll call, uh, our officers will be given their assignments and they're going to come out here and they're going to be uh, assigned their horse. And more, most common than not, the officers assigned to the same horse. So I'm going to give you uh, your attention now to uh, Eric Coffey. He's one of our assistant squad leaders, and he will kind of walk around the barn and kind of introduce you to some of our horses and how we prepare for our assignments. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Coffey. I'm a uh, police officer here with the mounted unit. I've been here for almost 12 years now. And uh, I'm going to give you a tour of our barn here. Uh, Going to try to hit some of your questions that you guys uh, have asked us on Facebook. So if you guys follow me, we'll uh, walk through and do a tour. This is uh, some of the stuff that we sell at some of our huge events that we have, which, is, which hit a couple times a year. If you guys ever want to join us at our events. Uh, right now we have 24 horses in our barn. Uh, we'll start off the tour here. Uh, 24 horses, they're all quarter horses. They're all geldings. Uh, they range in age from about five to the young 20s. When they start hitting their 20s, uh, Mary asked about retirement. They start hitting their 20s. Uh, we, we start using them a lot less to preserve their backs or if they have some, uh, some type of medical uh, problems, we, we slowly start retiring in their, in their 20s. As far as retirement, like she asked, where do they go? If I rode a horse for, for five or 10 years, I get first dibs on where I want that. Obviously, most of us in this city don't have horse property, so it, it goes from there maybe to a good home. A lot of our horses now that we're retiring, as long as they're in good health, and uh, they go to a lot of different facilities, one being wounded warriors. We have um, children with disabilities. They get to walk the horses around on a daily basis to, uh, to kind of facilitate some of the, the needs that they, they need. So follow me. We'll see you. Most of our horses are in the arena right now. Uh, but we're going to meet a couple right now and then I'll walk you over. This is, a, this is our a, a room where we keep all of our pads. Every horse has its own duty pad, his own training pad, and every horse has its own bridle. Um, like I said, we have 24 horses right now. Um, this is probably one of our horses that has been here one of the longest. He's, he's what we call, quote unquote, a bomb-proof horse. His name's Whitewater. A lot of our chiefs had ridden him in, uh, in our rose parades. He is our probably most spectacular horse. This is a perfect example of a horse that is only used maybe about once a week in the streets. That doesn't mean that he sits in his stall every all, all day. He gets out and about and, and we take him on walks, but in the streets he only gets used maybe once a day. Uh, I'm sorry, once a week. He doesn't get used on any big hill work, anything like that. This is probably one of the most spectacular horses that you've ridden. If, coming here to this unit, you will ride this horse in the beginning to kind of figure out what in the world how to ride in the streets. Um, how, how it works as far as uh, 
as far as horses and assignments. Some of you had asked how you get assigned a horse. Uh, we come here as police officers. We don't come here as quote unquote cowboys, cowgirls, ranchers. We come here as police officers with maybe a, a, an idea that we may want to do something horse related. Uh, we, when you get here, we go through about a four or five week, very intense school, a uh, horse riding school, for lack of a better term. And basically we don't teach you anything about police work. We teach you all about riding a horse from the feet to the nose, everything about the horse. Then we get yourselves on the horse and we teach you how to ride. Uh, again, it's about four or five weeks every day uh, riding different horses because as you know, horses are very different depending on what it is. Um, and then after that, you get assigned to someone like myself that has been here for quite a long time. And I teach you how not only how to ride for the four or five weeks, but then I teach you how to ride in the streets. It's very different riding in an arena compared to the street. The street is, is a, a whole different ball game. You kind of have to foresee problems way up ahead. If you guys aren't aware, horses go are flight animals, so they go away from pressure. And now I'm taking them to Hollywood and Highland where there's a million people or down Venice Boardwalk. Um, the the uh, like Sylvia asked about desensitizing um, our horses come in with a good demeanor we bring a lot of we go and look for horses and a lot of them come in and they kind of don't make it after a first week after we try them out it doesn't matter about training it matters about demeanor and the fact that they can a bus can go by them and they don't get scared so um, once, once they get past week one, two, three, and four, then we decide to purchase the horses and we slowly start taking them into the streets. Uh, Maverick is a perfect example. He came here about eight, nine years ago. Um, did really, really well in the streets. We purchased him and he's been nothing short of spectacular. He's right next to Whitewater because he is number two in our barn. No, Whitewater right here is number one. When he retires, Maverick's gonna take his spot because he's so spectacular in the street. Uh, again, the, if you can see down here, a lot of our horses are out. We're going to meet a lot of them in a second here. Um, White what? And Eric, not, not to interrupt you, but just so we can reiterate, it's very difficult to find a good quality police horse. Um, a lot of people ask us, where do we get our horses from? They don't come from one place. We look all over the state to get quality police horses. I would say for every one horse, that, for every 10 horses we look at, one may make it to the, to, to the barn. And that's because of the right mindset. Physically, they may pass it, but we need a horse that has the right mindset that's able to do police work, because as Eric alluded to, it's way different than being out there in the field. Uh, again, like Carmen, I believe it was Carmen asked what type of horse. We have all quarter horses. As you can tell, they're all about the same height. Uh, this is our saddle room. All, we have all the same saddles, all the uh, same, same everything. It's a very uniform uh, facility here. So because of that, we have to have the same size horse as far as a saddle is concerned. Uh, so as you can tell right here, this is my horse. I'll give you a quick synopsis of this horse. We just purchased him. He's been here for less than six months. This is Chavalito. Uh, he is five years old. That's a, we usually buy him at about five-year-old plus. Uh, five-year-old quarter horse. Uh, this is the Western saddle that we use. This is the exact saddle. This is the exact look that you, you see us uh, in the street. Uh, that's our duty pad and everything. This horse has been so great. I, a lot of the horses come in and, and myself or some of the people that have been here a while will ride the newer horses in the street and, to get them acclimated to the street. This horse is in particular is so, so great in the street and is so unafraid of everything. He's doing very, very well. So he's been in the streets for maybe about two months now and he's been nothing short of, of, of spectacular. So, so this horse, eventually, hopefully, once uh, everything uh, gets back to normal, will 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 be seen in uh, in Venice Beach. Just like Bobby was asking, he's probably seen us a million times going down the boardwalk in Venice Beach. Well, this horse is going to do it. So, and again, this horse is going to be around for probably 15 or 20 years, being that he's only five year old uh, uh, horse. So he's going to be around a long time. So he'll uh, we'll get his uh, use out of him. Um, as far as feeding horses, I know a lot of people have asked about uh, hand feeding our horses. We don't technically like to do that in the streets because if, uh, if we start hand feeding horses, horses think that there might be food coming. So if a, a kid or somebody pets the horse, which we love it, we actually prefer if people come, come over and ask us to pet the horse. We just don't want hands to go in the mouths. Uh, a lot of people are, are uh, it, for, for me and my contact with the, with the public, it's very different as far as being in a car. For me, a lot of times people would never walk up to me in a car and say, 
what kind of engine you got under there or this or that, but a million people come and talk to you about the horse. So I think it, it's a whole different interaction with the public as far as, as, far as a positive uh, interaction. Everybody will come up and ask you about what's your name of your horse? Why in the world do you have those horses? Well, a lot of those questions that we answer, and by the time they get done, they probably say, wow, this, these police officers are actually human and regular, just like, just like me and you. Uh, we use the horses for lots of reasons in crowds, like the lieutenant was telling us, uh, that we go to Venice, uh, we, we do a lot of Hollywood, we do a lot of Skid Row. The reasons why is because there's so many people, we are high up on that seat, whereas if you're in a car, you're way down low. We're high up in the seat, a, a, a car obviously can't drive through people, but I'll tell you right now, if I'm on top of that horse, you are not standing in my way if I'm trying to get through you. Um, people just seem to, to nonchalantly get out of our way and we go do what we need to do uh, as far as uh, crowds are concerned. Horses are very good deterrent for crowds. Another reason why we use them, we get about 10 of us, which you're gonna see, we're gonna show you in a few minutes here uh, in the arena. We get 10 or 15 of us on top of the horse in a line. Most crowds are, uh, are deathly afraid of it and will run, which, which, uh, which diminishes the fact that we have to get uh, close to uh, uh, maybe a crowd or something like that. But uh, we do a lot of search and rescue. If you get lost in the hills or this or that, you, this horse would be perfect as young as he is to, to go out and rescue in the hills. And uh, just recently, within the last maybe five or six years, um, we've gotten a lot of calls due to the wildfires. Um, what we do is, is we're all trained to uh, drive all these these trucks and trailers out here. So when a fire does hit in Silmar or wherever it may be, we load up in these trucks and trailers with our lights and sirens. We go up into the hills and we rescue people's horses from uh, the oncoming fire, um, which, which is a huge benefit. A lot of times we take them to Hanson Dam or Pierce College and we get right back into the fire and we go do it again. So I believe a handful of years ago on one certain fire, we rescued maybe 70 or 80 horses in, in one, maybe in a, in a one or two day span. So it's been, uh, it's been pretty spectacular. The capabilities of not only the horse, but the officers that, that, that are here at the, uh, are here at the barn. If you hey, follow sir, me. Uh, quick yes. question. I know you said in a minute, we're going to go and, and watch some training. Uh, can you talk to maybe some of the kids or even the parents that are at home yeah. watching this? Uh, obviously the, the mayor has said it's safer for people to be at home. So if they are home, can you just touch on the importance of diet, Yes. exercise, yes. training, yes. why that's important for you as an officer, for a the horses, absolutely. and for people to be watching at home? Absolutely, follow me. I'm gonna go back to the horse here. Uh, this is a very intense job as far as exercise is concerned. It, you are constantly up and down on that horse all day long. That saddle in itself weighs a ton. So it, it, is, it is imperative to, to be in physically great shape in this, in this unit, as well as for any police officer for that matter. Um, a, a daily routine as far as the horses are concerned is a perfect another example of this horse can't sit in that stall for a month and do nothing it's impossible that horse would be would be have horrible uh, it, he, he wouldn't be able to do the job that he needs to do so he gets out every single day and and gets his work we get here to work he gets about an uh, about a 30 minute to 45 minute warm-up as, as as well as ourselves to stretch our legs, to get our blood flowing, to, to, to do everything. Their diet is, is very, very uh, well taken care of as, as well as ours. Um, they have to be on a particular uh, certain diet because they're, they have to uh, work at, at, you know, sometimes very long hours, six hours at a time. Or if, if your child or pers uh, elderly person is, is lost somewhere in the, in the hills of Griffith Park, that horse is, is gonna be working to find that person. So it's imperative to, it's, it's very important for, for health to keep active going. Um, just throwing that saddle on is, is you, need, you, need, uh, you need a lot of strength for that. And now let alone going up and down on that horse. That so many so times. if I heard correctly, you wanna have a routine, right? Uh, routine absolute, absolute routine, a diet, sleep, uh, exercise. exercise not just yourself your horse if you're at home with your dogs take them out on a walk that's what we do with our horses may, they we may not ride them but at least we're gonna be walking around doing this getting them out and acclimated and, and getting them still going in the streets hey, Hector, uh, and if I could touch uh, again about the benefits of police work on horseback is the approachability part of being a mounted officer 
Many times it can be intimidating. People don't want to approach an officer in uniform. They don't want to approach a police unit, but everybody loves a horse. Everybody loves to approach the horse, touch the horse, and there is that engagement that is lost many times with the uniform officer. Officer on top of horseback, they start speaking about the horse, and there's a lot of shared information that comes with that relationship. So that's one of the great benefits of be, having horseback officers is that connection with the horse in the community. Now, LT, you have uh, actually a pin on your uniform. Correct. That, uh, most people don't see on an officer's uniform. Correct. Uh, what's the significance of that? This pin? is the mounted pin. Uh, up when you get accepted into this unit, you are, most, as Eric alluded to, uh, most people come with no riding experience. So we put every officer that's part of this unit into a mounted school. They get 30 days of training. Uh, in, that tra in that training, not only do they learn about the physiology of the horse, but they're learning how to ride all different gates on the horse, the relationship with the horse, and learning how to do police work on, on horseback. Uh, upon completion, there's a graduation, and you receive your pin as part of that graduation. All right. Yeah. You ready yeah. to show us some yeah, training? Yeah, come on out. That, one of the most important things, if you ever come to our barn, I know Shirley asked on, on, uh, on, on online there is, is, do we have a barn cat? We do. We have a barn cat. I don't know where she is. Hopefully she's uh, doing her job. Uh, her name is Socks. She takes care of the barn. Uh, hence the reason why the barn looks the way it does. This, this is not like any normal barn. This is a very well kept up barn. We do everything or most everything ourselves. We take care of the horses ourselves. We do have a civilian staff that takes care of uh, the, the barn, the medical needs of the horses, the supplements of the horses, but we also, us as officers, do everything as well. Whether it comes from picking the horse's feet to uh, grooming the horse to bathing the horse to getting the horse ready, it's all incumbent upon all of us to learn how to do it and to do it and to do it right. So. Uh, what are the interesting facts about where do we get our horses and not only that they come from different places but how do we purchase them the city does not have an actually this is not paid through uh, taxpayers money all every horse on this on this property is through donations so through the generosity of donations from great supporters in this community is how we purchase all of our horses mm -hmm. so cleanliness I'm sure the parents hearing at home right remind the kids that yes right even yes the mounted unit say make sure you keep your rooms clean that's right even though you're in a barn it doesn't have to look like a barn it can be nice and clean which which obviously it is so follow me and uh come on through uh i know a lot of people have asked about tours and everything of coming here which is at an absolute possibility what we do once or twice a year is, is we we do an open house uh at this open house we open our doors to the public uh, we put on a great show of demonstration of, of, uh, of what we do. We bring our canine unit, our SWAT team in this huge arena here and, uh, and, and we show the capabilities of not just us but the other units in, uh, involved in Metropolitan Division. Right now we're going to bring you inside the barn here and meet some of our horses and officers and uh, see what in the world we do here. Uh, twice a month we do a training day, uh, which, which, which is today what we're doing right now. Uh, to keep the exact reason why you were asking before about keeping uh, yourself in shape, the horses need that as well. So right now, not only do the horses go out in the streets daily, but twice a month, they get a full day of riding, whether it be in our arena. We're, we're really close to Griffith Park, which you can see in the back there, so we ride a lot in the, in the, uh, in the park. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, kind of, I'll kind of show some of the horses as they come by. This is a brand new horse that was bought with my horse. His name is Billy. On top of him is Gary, one of the one of the guys who's been here a very long time. So as you can tell, he's riding one of our uh, newer horses. This this massive horse here, and Roger Johnson's on. This is Smokey. He's been around a long time. He was an ex sheriff horse. Now he's uh, uh, one of an LAPD horse. He's in his 20s. This horse right here is Houdini. You got Benny here is an ex trail horse. You got Ernie, which is one of our most spectacular horses. You got Chico as another horse. Just have them go inside in the middle. So, so come on in here. To I'll, to Ricky I'll make sure you don't get hit here. This, this right here is going to be a, is Rick Mendoza. He's our head train. I got your horse. What, hold up. Let's let them get in the camera. How you doing? I'm Officer Mendoza. And they just slide right in the middle right here. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what That's we're good. doing. Come on in the middle. Plus one come on in the middle. So what you're seeing right now is... Um, we're working on transitions with our horses and what a transition is is moving from a different uh, 
speed to another. There's three different speeds, walk, trot, and canter. And what you're gonna see right here is one of our plus ones, Gary, is calling uh, guys into the center and asking for transition in the lope. And what we're looking for is a smooth transition. We're not looking for horses to blow up and accelerate quickly. We want it smooth and comfortably into the gate. We're looking for control, we're looking for headset, we're making sure they're on the right lead. The lead basically is when the horse is loping on the left side, the left front foot is the farthest reaching foot in a foot. And you'll see the guys, and that's what Gary's doing. And right how now. many horses are in the ring right now? We have right now in our arena, I think we have about 18 horses today. We have 24 in our barn. Um, so uh, usually what we try to do is all the horses, we work them down. We get to see how they're working for the officers. And then we progress their training as everything goes on. So we're just working our horses down, uh, seeing how they're working for their riders. Ricky, can you explain um, what it takes to get a horse ready uh, for police work? Well, you know, horses are fight animals, and so by nature, uh, they want to run from a problem. And so all we're trying to do is teach our horses that everything that moves fast and makes noise isn't a predator. We're trying to get them used to urban environments, unnatural environments, and get them to re just be relaxed and comfortable. And we do that in a controlled environment in our arena. We uh, we have to get our horses used to different uh, sensory items that, that, they'll, that they'll come across in the streets. Now, are all the horses trained in-house? They're all trained by LAPD officers, LAPD personnel? Yes, yes. We select all our horses personally, and we bring them in for a 30-day trial. Not every horse that we select is kept, but uh, if they show the ability to do the job and ride in urban environments, then obviously that they'll stay. Uh, we're, by no means are we horse trainers that we break horses, meaning start them as colts, but we look for horses that are right-minded horses that are sound, that aren't injured, and that uh, show the ability to do a job. Uh, these are some of the things that we do to horses. We uh, expose them to sensory items. Flares is something that most horses have problems with. Those of you that uh, have horses know this. Smoke, it makes noise. Horses don't typically like these things. So in a controlled environment, after we work the horses down, we get them exercised and getting their minds on us, then we walk them through sensory items like that. And that's what Gary's doing right now. Horses are moving into column of twos. A column of twos simply just means that two horses, two lines of horses, walking boot to boot, and that's typically how we move our horses from point A to point B in the field. So if they're not in a in a in a typical crowd crowd or uh crime suppression mode, and we're doing like a crowd management or crowd control, we'll move from point A to point B in that column of twos, and that's what you'll see. We use a lot of flags. A lot of horses are afraid of flags, so Gary right here on that brand new horse that we have is going through all the horses with the flags. So we, just, we try to expose them to as much as we can in a controlled environment, and, a, and it's all positive yeah. reinforcement for the horses. Everything is positive. Oh. We always want our horses to win. So from here, it's all positive. Everything positive, so we're gonna we put our we put our better horses in the front to show exactly what the horses to the to the rear need to act. Like. As you can tell, the flag is going by all the horses, accidentally bumping maybe into them. Some of these horses that you see are like this horse right here. The second one, Jim Diamond is on. His name is Tiger. He's been in this unit for a short while. He's he's absolutely spectacular. The horse is good at is good at everything that he can he can uh, he can do everything him and Jim have, have have become a very good pair there's another horse here Dara Machado's on he came in as a four-year-old a really young horse he's a really good horse he's been here for two years so he's six now that's that's a very young horse we ride in the way we ride urban environments are really difficult for horses to ride in all we're trying to do with our horse and riders is establish a relationship and trust if we build trust with our horse and riders then we can get a lot of things done and that's what we do in a control training environment now that one horse you mentioned might have been one of the smallest horses out here. So size isn't necessarily a, a factor as to well, typically how the horse might perform. Horse is about 15 hands. Um, so a 15 hand horse is something that we want, but we do have some horse like that big white one is about 16 too. He's a bigger horse, but you know. Uh, we want our horses to be about 15 hands because all our officers mount and dismount in the field anywhere like from 10 to 12 times a day. So uh, quarter horses work well for us and quarter horses that are, are they're stout, that are built to carry those different size officers work for us because we mount and dismount. 
what we're trying to do. What you see right here is when we're going to move a crowd, we get the horses in a straight line and we'll push right at the crowd. So as you can see, the horses are brave. They're broke. They're walking right through you. Now, I will say this. I think my camera started shaking a little bit more. <laughs> it was a little intimidating. Definitely a little intimidating. We say that, and I'm not doing anything wrong. We say that one horse is the equivalent of six ground pounders. So meaning that one guy on a horse is equivalent of six officers standing on the ground pushing the crowd. So you can get a lot done with five horses. What might take 15 officers, we can get it done with five or six horses. Awesome. Well, I think uh, we got most of the questions answered that uh, came in through right. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Uh, if, are there any parting words you want to say to the parents, to the kids, to anybody who's going to be watching this? I think uh, as Eric alluded to, um, even though we are a fully functioning unit, we do open ourselves up for visits. Um, we typically have many schools. We have uh, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts all visiting us. We do visits uh, on our own also to these locations. So if you are, are interested um, to come visit us, uh, just give us a call so we can prepare in advance. Call us at 213-485-5909, 213-485-5909. Uh, and just uh, ask for uh, Officer Eric Coffey. Thank you very much and thanks for visiting us. Thank you all.